Hello and welcome. This is Christian. Okay, in this video, we'll talk about object-oriented programming, one of the coolest things you will ever experience if you had never done it before. So let's get started. So here's a very uh, a simple definition of what an object-oriented programming is. So it is a programming model that is organized around objects. Okay, here I put uh, quotes the word objects here. That's what that's important in which a uh, or programs are made up of modules or we call these classes okay so you'll eventually understand what that means but it's a very simple definition and come so let's go to the next screen here object oriented programming if it's a true object oriented program uh, programmer language must have at least these four pillars okay we call these four pillars uh, or you can call it uh, principles however you call it but it must have these four at least. So the inheritance, uh, encapsulation, abstraction, and polymorphism. So let's talk about encapsulation first. So encapsulation is uh, also known as data hiding or information hiding. It builds or it creates this black box. You could think of this as yourself, as a person, right? So you are in a programming term you are an object it's a 3d object in a 3d space now inside your uh, mind or your brain in that matter we don't know what you're thinking right i don't know what you think i don't know what you plan to do um i don't know anything about you other than what i can guess right but so usually so let's just say you have uh things that you can use to describe you like your your age, uh, you know your um, address, your phone number, um, and you know all these information about you are in a black box. So I can't know your phone number, for example. If I want to know, then I just ask you, "Hey, uh, Sean, uh, please tell me your phone number." Then you tell me, right? And so from that point on, I know your number. But then, of course, you can change it the next day, and I won't have that information anymore. So I have to keep asking you every time. So that's what happened in the program, right? So you keep asking the data to get the correct data every time. So you have this data hiding. So you make the data very private to yourself or to that object. Okay, so that's encapsulation. Uh, the next thing is inheritance. This is uh, very similar to inheritance in the um, real world. It is not exactly. If it is, I'll be petrified. <laughs> okay, um, but it is a relationship between two classes, at least two classes. Okay, um, it establishes this uh, what's called the is a relationship. Think of it like this example here: a dog is a pet, right? So a dog is a pet. So because a dog is a subclass of a pet a cat is also a pet right so you establish this relationship between the pet and the dog class like that um, next is um, abstraction <clears throat> abstraction is really just an idea so you think of it as an idea or a concept but a concept is very common to uh, some other subgroups that can be shared to those subgroups right uh, because it's only ab an abstract idea, it cannot be used to create an object out of that in programming terms. So, for example, if you think back to the human or the person, uh, the people, right? We have very common features. We have, you know, hands, uh, you know, arms and legs and, uh, you know, ears and mouth and all these stuff about us. And you can't really, if you think that in terms of a person, you can't really, like, um, create something out of that in existence, right? Because usually it's a part of a person. So these are like ideas or common features that is common to all people. Okay, so that's abstraction. And that was the word abstraction. I mean, it's very abstract. Okay, and then finally, polymorphism. This one here is kind of hard to understand. Uh, so if you break the uh, terms down, term down, uh, so if you break it down to like poly means many and then morph means to change forms, right? Or many forms. And but really, if you think of a simple term, be like a one name, but many forms. Okay, it's the same name but has many forms. Okay, it's like a ghost, but you have many kinds of ghosts, kind of like that, right? Um, and it also has two uh, subcategories, and both of these are polymorphism. And one of them is called the method overload. Okay, these are 
also categorized as static. Uh, and then you have the method override, and they said also um, categorized as, as uh, dynamic. And again, we'll see what this means later, and when you start coding, you see how this work, these work. But for now, these are the four important pillars of object-oriented programming. So let's see how this actually um, work in, in another example here. So here I have the classes. Let me just make this a little bit smaller so you can fit in the screen here. So I have a um, a class called parent. Okay, and I have two subclasses. These are child classes or children of the parent class. This diagram look maybe very familiar to those of you who already uh, you know um, used this before. But you have a parent and a child. So these two children or these two child classes inherit the parent class. Okay, so inheritance means you, if you are a child, you own everything that the parent has plus your own. Okay, so child A has both the A and B and the investment from the parent, and then plus its own, which is D, E, and F. I just put in red. Child B also has everything from the parent, A, B, and the investment, plus its own in green. Okay, so uh, I put this notation here saying that the parent will have um, everything less than or equal to that of the child. It cannot have more than the child, right? Uh, because it does not inherit the child. It doesn't go the other way around. It's only one direction here, okay? Uh, because the child has everything in the parent, it may or may not have its own. If it does, then it has more, right? That's why this is true. And then the child and child B would usually, uh, either they have the same amount of things. If they don't have anything of their own, then they will have the same things from the parent. In that case, they'll all be equal. Or if it has its own stuff, then it could have more or less be between each other. Okay, so these two may or may not be equal. Um, I'm talking about the things they have, the properties and features they have. Okay, so um, this is an example of uh, inheritance. So A and B inherit the um, parent. Okay, these up here, A, B, and A, B, D, F here, these are called um, fields. Okay, or we call these like uh, um, attributes or descriptions. Okay. Down here, I should put this a plus for uh, this investment just to be consistent. Um, it needs to be a plus. And they have meaning. The plus and minuses has meaning. The minus means they're private, plus means they're public. And we'll talk about those later on. So um, if you look at here, let's talk about... So we, we um, already understand the uh, concept of inheritance, right? You inherit that. And then let's talk about the idea of um, method override. Okay, override, if you go back here, this override here, it's a dynamic thing, right? Override means you are inheriting something, like uh, usually a function from the parent's class, and in your local or the child class, you are overriding what the parent is, is supposed to be doing, right? So, for example, the parent has a function, in this case, called investment. And since child A and child B both inherit the parent class, they both have the investment option. But the parent doesn't tell the child or the children what to do with investment. And it, they can choose to do exactly what the parent is doing. Maybe they're just savings, right? Or they can do something else completely the way they want. So child A decides to use the investment, right, to buy stocks. But child B uses to buy real estate. So, okay, so this is like polymorphism. It's the same name, investment, 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 but you do different things, right? So one name, many forms, that's polymorphism. And this type of polymorphism is the method override or overriding because you're overriding the parent's investment. You're doing your own way, okay? You could choose to do exactly what the parent does and just keep it as is, or you can do it your own way, okay? So that is established between a, a two classes only. So remember again, override deals with child and parent classes. So the next part is the overload. 
the method overload is what you see here in green, these three uh, vacation lines down here. Okay, so overloading is your overloading it only happens within the same class. Okay, it does not involve other classes. So uh, not like the investment. If you do that, then that'll be overriding. Okay, so overloading is on local in the same class. Again, the same name, right? But different form, but locally. Okay, so I have a vacation here. Let's say, you know, B wants to take a vacation. You know, this year I might choose to drive. Maybe next month or next year I will choose to fly. And maybe the following year I will choose to walk. But they're all vacations. Okay? So it's the same name, many forms, and you are overloading, okay, based on the type of activities or the type of vacation you want to take. I mean, how you, how you take your vacation. Okay? So you are overloading the vacation with the drive option with the fly or the walk. So I hope that is a little bit clear. Uh, the distinction between method override, that is from parent to child, and method overload is within the same class. Okay, so um, let's move on to the next one. And then objects. So here's a very uh, inter interesting picture of the Dukes of Hazzard's car, one of my favorite shows in the 80s. <clears throat> so here, object, you think of object as an object in the 3D space, in the real world, right? Things that you have, if you think of object, it's a very classic um, example of a car. So the object car can have attributes, or we have descriptions to describe what this car is, right? And it also has functions or we call these behaviors, or sometimes we call these methods. Okay, so the attributes would be like, for example, you have your a car color, you have a VIN number, the size, model maker, fuel type, year transmission, and so on. Okay, uh, these are a data that will describe the car. Okay, and then over here you have some functions that a car can do. Okay, you can start the car, stop the car, you can park. Uh, drive, you can accelerate, turn, and you can reverse, and so forth. Okay, so you have all these are called, um, uh, you know, attributes and uh, functions or properties of the car. Okay, so again, this is a, a object. It's a very, it's almost like a, it, it's still an object, but it's not a very specific object because here I'm just putting some uh, fields to store some data, right? So let's see what an actual object will look like. Okay, so um, using the same example, I'm going to use the UML. The UML, UML stands for I think it's a Unified Model Language. Okay, it's very common in computer uh, and programming, in software engineering, uh, and also in uh, database design and many others um, related. Okay, so here again we take the class of the car. Okay, so a class is like a template or a blueprint. You could think of it that way. A class is the blueprint to build a car, a blueprint of a house to build a house, and so on, to build that object. Whatever the object is, you must have a template, right? I mean, you can just like pop it out of somewhere and, and there it is. You have a blueprint. So the class in this case would be a car, and these are the fields, okay? Um, so this is a typical UML. I mean, it's um, it, it tells you what uh, what your uh, actual code will look like. Okay, I give you this, that idea, that, uh, a broad overview of what your class will look like in the code. So we have in the top box here, or uh, are a list, or a list of um, of attributes. Okay, or we call these fields of the car and usually they're all minus in the front that means these are private again private so that you keep your data encapsulated right create that black box it's not available to other objects and then down below that you have uh, these are usually functions or methods and usually most of these will be pluses okay so they are public to outside objects outside world so if you want to know what uh, year it is then in here somewhere you have to have a function called get the year 
and then it will grab that and then it will grab that from here with the now you cannot access the year directly but through a function okay so these are the uh, the functions of the car and then so with a blueprint it's very like useless until you create objects out of that blueprint right if you have a blueprint to build a house if you're not going to build it the blueprint means nothing okay just an idea right but once you create an object and we call this term creation of an object is instantiation so we hear the term instantiate or instantiation it means create an object out of a class okay it has to be from a class it can't just come from nowhere either Okay, so here is a syntax how you can create an object out of this car class. So I'm going to create a uh, Mustang. It's a car type, right? <clears throat> and equals a new car. So the car here is the class name followed by a pair of paren. This is called a constructor. We'll talk about that later. So once I create this new car, this red line here, now this car called Mustang, this object becomes alive in the program. So here is the Mustang. Okay. So then once I create that, created that object, I can go in and then now I have access to all of these fields plus all of these functions for the Mustang object. And I can go there and then, uh, you know, assign a make, a model, a VIN number, a year, color, and uh, so on to the car. So now, once you assign those data, then your Mustang object has this information in there. I can create another car called the Camry. I will do the same thing, and I have these data, right? If you notice, they have different information here, right? But the uh, functions are exactly the same because they're both cars. They're both from the same blueprint, and so they have the same functions but their data are different. So this data are uh, like, uh, um, again, it's that black box. So the Mustang object will never know what the Camry has. It's year, it's name, and it's, it's, it's uh, VIN number, and vice versa. If it wants to know that it needs to ask Camry, hey, uh, give me your, um, what's your color? And then you will call a color function down here to get the color and then vice versa, right? So you have two actual objects created out of a template called class through the object instantiation process. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Um, this is a very common way to create objects in every object-oriented uh, program language, whether it's a full-fledged object-oriented or an object-based language such as JavaScript. Uh, it's the same concept. Uh, the way you instantiate object may be a little bit different, uh, depends on which language you use, but um, it'll be uh, similar. Okay, so. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And of course, you can always Google for uh, these terms and and how these work. There's a lot of information out there. But hopefully, this video will actually explain a little bit uh, to help you get started. Thank you.